Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 58 for Wednesday, August 12th, 2015. SMS messaging. This episode of Android App Arena is brought to you by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for the right payments API, check out the Braintree V.0 SDK. With one simple integration, you get every way to pay. To learn more and to try out the sandbox, go to braintreepayments.com slash arena. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell, with glasses. Uh, wow, what a month it's been for Android. One of the biggest sec security stories, and I'm sure you've heard of it, to come out of Black Hat last week was a vulnerability in 950 million Android devices that would enable a bad guy to use SMS apps like Google Hangouts as a vector for passing along a payload inside what appears to be a standard MMS message. Stage Fright is actually the name of a media component within the core Android operating system that would be targeted in an attack such as this. And that scary sounding name helped the security story reach new heights of media coverage, as well as, you know, a healthy amount of fear, uncertainty, and doubt in the minds of millions of Android users. So first, right off the top, it's not as significant, I mean, it's significant, it's something to, something to be concerned with, but it's nothing to worry about quite yet. Here's the good news. System updates are rolling out to select devices to address stage fright. The bad news is that your device might not get that update because let's just say Android's update record for its overabundance of devices doesn't paint a beautiful picture of the near future in that regard. So another way that you can actually protect yourself right now is to use an SMS app that actually safeguards against the vulnerability specifically. Now, Google Hangouts does this, as do today's three apps that I'm going to look out here. And hey, what do you know? Aside from that protection, these three SMS messaging apps are actually awesome alternatives to the ones that you might be using on your device. So let's pit three excellent SMS messaging apps against each other in this week's Best of the Best. First up in this text message extravaganza is definitely one of the apps that by far received the most requests from fans of this show. It's Textra SMS. It's a feature-rich replacement for any SMS app on your device. And first of all, the design is clean and material with a dark theme to begin with, as well as vibrant colors for everything from the headers to the text bubbles and even the buttons themselves. If you don't like the way it looks, head on into settings and you can find customize looks. And there you can drill things down super deep from light and dark modes to the primary as well as accent color choices for the theme. Uh, there's text bubbles and even the color of the app icon. And text formatting is customizable as well. Now, taking a look at my inbox, you get a nice brief look at the latest messages in there. You can tap the floating action button to start a message, but I'll go ahead and tap into one of my contacts to do that. And doing so brings you to the conversation view. When I'm sending a message, this plus down here toggles a very important section of Textra. Here, you have access in that bottom row to many additional options. Emojis, of course. There's snapping a picture, or you can select a picture from your gallery. This clock here allows you to set up a text message to send at a future date and time, which is very unique for SMS apps. You can share a contact as text or as a V card. And this document icon actually allows you to insert an emotion, which is a way to bring in the perfect animated GIF. And the selection here is actually pretty bountiful, to say the least. When you receive a message, Textra can pop a nice floating notification near the top of the screen, which can then be tapped on to get right to composing a message inside that notification. And settings is chock full of extra stuff, just a few notable things. SMS blacklist, which allows you to block certain numbers from the app. 
There's send delay, which will delay any message you send, so you have time to change your mind, basically. And this option here for stage fright protection, this option actually determines if an MMS is a video file, and if it is, no thumbnail is retrieved, and sharing or saving won't happen without agreeing to an explicit warning. Check out the SMS app that everyone is talking about. Find Textra for free in the Play Store. Next is a popular SMS messaging app that went from paid to free only a few days ago, so score for you. Though you might opt to donate inside the app if you actually like what you see here. It's time to check out QK SMS, Quick Text Messenger. First, the design, again, is faithful to material design spec. In fact, it shares a lot with Textra by the look of the conversations view. I'll tap into a conversation and again, things look nice and bubbly and colorful. To compose, you can either drop into a conversation and start typing or from the conversations overview, just tap the floating action button. That brings you to the compose screen where you can search for a contact or you can tap a starred contact to compose a message directly to them with no friction. This plus button down here next to the text entry expands things out so you can add an image from your gallery or your camera, pretty standard, and toggle delayed messaging, which will wait to send your message. And you can specify how long that delay is set for in the settings. Now, some of the best features are hidden inside those settings, and you'll want to expand settings down at the bottom to see everything. Some features that stand out to me here, a huge page full of appearance customizations, tweaking color, font, how your avatars are displayed for your contacts, even an automatic night mode that will put you into a dark theme at a certain time. There's automatic emoji for translating my lazy text emoji into image emoji. That's kind of neat. The proximity sensor can be used to determine if you're putting the phone to your ear while sending a message, and that will automatically call that contact. Wear support, which includes quick responses that can be easily selected when a message comes through and QK Compose for adding a persistent notification that acts as a one-tap way to start a new message to someone from your notification shade. QK SMS states that it's protected against the Stage Fright MMS exploit by avoiding the use of the Stage Fright library entirely, so that's a good thing. If you like your SMS apps awesome and free, then you'll love QK SMS. Find it right now in the Play Store. Up next is an app that has some nice material design touches, but definitely has its own flair as well, not to mention a ton of original options. Evolve SMS pushes the conversations list to the slide out bar on the left of the screen. There you'll find all the threads you're currently engaged in and tapping any of them pushes that tray to the side to show the full conversation with that contact. And here, you actually have a lot of control over how you compose to that person. Next to the text input box is that handy paperclip button that pulls up a large list of media types to send over. Image and camera for pictures and video as well. There's animated GIF support. You can record an audio file if you have a voice recording app installed, so you'll want to make sure and install one. This V-card button for sending contact info of anyone in your contacts list makes that easy. Schedule SMS for setting a date and time for that message to fire off. And you can even set it to repeat daily all the way to yearly. And then template. Here's where you can write down your own quick responses and then select them on the fly for saying things that will save you time, like call you back in a sec. Now, up in the overflow menu, there's a batch edit feature. This actually allows you to select multiple messages inside a conversation to do things to all of them at once, like copy all the text or lock them so they don't get deleted somehow. Now let's talk about a few more unique options here. To name a few, contact picture management if you want to assign your own custom images to contacts inside the app, kind of override the ones that are already there. There's pop-up reply for showing a pop-up when a new message arrives that you can compose a reply from directly. Different notification settings per contact if you want to spend the time to set it up. Yes, you can disable auto retrieval of MMS, so that's good for getting around the stage fright issue. There are security settings for the app itself, which is a nice bonus, and that security can even be applied on a per conversation basis. And back up all your message data to Dropbox or Google Drive. 
Finally, if you want to set up a personalized SMS message that actually extracts a recipient's name like they do in the spam big leagues, well, you can do that with Evolve SMS if you really need to. Evolve SMS is free, though you can upgrade to more themes and more customization in the app. Each of those costs $1.49, so $3 all in. Check out Evolve SMS in the Play Store right now. All right, so all three protect you from the stage fright vulnerability right now, whether your device has received a security update yet or not. And they're all pretty, as you saw, and feature rich as well. Now, if I had to pick one to live with on my device going forward, which one would I pick? Which one would you pick? Is it Textra, QK SMS, or Evolve SMS? Well, if completely free is your cup of tea, it's hard not to recommend QK SMS, though personally I found its feature set to be a little bit limited, especially in comparison with the other apps on today's show. And I honestly, I find Textra and Evolve SMS to run a very tight race against each other. Both Textra and Evolve SMS look great. They pack some serious options. So honestly, for me, it's incredibly close. And I would say either one is an excellent pick, but that's no fun. You want a winner. So I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb and say for me, the winner this week is... Evolve SMS. I know everyone and their dog loves texture these days. And like I said, it's no slouch, but I really, really do enjoy having the ability to do cloud backup uh, in Evolve SMS. And the side tray layout design, I don't know, it speaks to me a tad more than the layout inside Textra. Seriously, I am splitting hairs here if you, if you hadn't picked that up. They are both pretty much equal, so you can't go wrong. Check them out for yourself and you'll see what I mean. All right, before we move on, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode. This episode is brought to you by Braintree. Yet again, love Braintree. It's code for easy online payments. This is for you developers out there. If you're building a mobile app and searching for a simple payment solution, you want to check out Braintree. The Braintree V.0 SDK makes it easy to offer multiple mobile payment types. You can start accepting PayPal, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, Venmo, cards, Android Pay, and more, all with a single integration. It's simple, secure payments with code that you can integrate literally in minutes. And developers, you're covered here. Don't worry about taking days to integrate your payments. With Braintree, it's done in minutes. And if you don't have the time, you can actually give them a call. They'll handle the integration for you and they'll walk you through it. Braintree code supports Android, iOS, and JavaScript clients. And there's SDKs in seven languages, .NET, Node.js, Java, Perl, PHP, Python, Ruby, and it's all elegant code, clearly documented. It's 10 lines of in-app code. That's it. Braintree gives you an easy way to accept multiple payment types with one simple integration. They also have quick, knowledgeable developer support if you have any questions along the way. So you can start accepting Apple Pay, PayPal, Bitcoin, Venmo cards, Whatever's next, Android Pay, throw that in there. All with a single integration with the Braintree V.0 SDK, one small snippet of code, and you're all set up in less than 10 minutes. So you can learn more and get your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free by going to braintreepayments.com slash arena. That's braintreepayments.com slash arena. We thank Braintree for their support. All right. Up next, I'm going to show you how you can take a break from all the chaos of everyday life with an uplifting game that'll bring you to a place of zen. This week's big app is for all you hard workers in the audience. You know who you are. You're an overachiever. You give your blood, your sweat, your tears for your company. In fact, you spend so much time at work that it just isn't enough. What you want more than anything is to go home, sit on your comfy couch, fire up a game that's all about getting fired from your job. Or rather, not getting fired and instead moving up the corporate ladder. But you will get fired a lot and often at random. The game is called, aptly put, Don't Get Fired. And fair warning, it could hit a little too close to home for some. You begin the game seeking a job at a Korean high-rise filled with businesses that are looking to push you to your limits. Once you get selected for a position, a process that can take a while and that you literally have no control over, you'll start out at the lowest rung on the ladder, a puny intern. There you'll sit at your stupid little desk waiting for your higher ups to have some work to pawn off onto you. Tap their desk when work appears and you'll see a stack of books and papers on your own desk begin to grow rapidly. 
This is all the work that you have to do to keep your job. So you'll work your way through that paperwork, but you'll also want to pace yourself. Work too hard, too fast, and you'll find yourself out of a job because, well, you blew through it so fast that you proved you weren't needed. You also don't want a job to be left unclaimed. Otherwise, you'll eventually be fired for incompetence. You can work harder by tapping your desk, though that comes at the expense of your health that regenerates slowly over time. Doing that too much will result in you resigning due to overexhaustion. And the president drops in from time to time, an event that sets the entire office into panic while everyone, including yourself, overworks themselves in order to impress. You have unlimited health when he's there, so use that time to blast through your stack as quickly as possible. You can also take a second job by watching an in-app ad on the side. That'll earn you extra money, but do that too much and the company will discover that you're working outside of your position with them and fire you for not committing yourself completely to the company. If this kind of stuff stresses you out, just remember it's all a game. In no way does it represent anything real. It's just something relaxing to take your mind off the stresses of life. But there's just enough randomness to the game mechanics to make you want to go out back with a fax machine and go all office space on it. If you like your games to hit a little too close to home, then you might enjoy the punishment and misery of Don't Get Fired for free in the Play Store right now. Not to mention that game is really hard. Don't Get Fired shares a lot in common with another game I've loved and hated equally and probably played too much uh, in my lifetime, uh, probably because it also hit a little too close to home. Do you remember Diner Dash? I know it's kind of an old game. In a previous life, uh, before podcasting, I worked in the food industry as a food server in some pretty high-end restaurants, and it was a total stress ball job. I miss it exactly 0%. Uh, there's something about playing that game that kind of emulates life, warts and all, that I can't quite put my finger on why we do this to ourselves, right? Why do we play these games that stress us out so much? But uh, they're still kind of fun, so definitely check it out. All right, send me your favorite apps, your favorite games, whatever you have, categories, uh, to arena at twit.tv. I read through them all and put them in my, my little doc for a future episode. Or you can post those to the subreddit at androidapparena.reddit.com. You can share them with me and the rest of the world there since that is public. The show records live every Wednesday around 4.30 p.m. Pacific following Tech News Tonight. That's at twit.tv. Look for the live button and click it. And if you can't make the live taping, the show will appear later in the evening in the feeds and on the show page. That can be found at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I will see you and you and you next week in the arena.